Bettina, thank you so much for joining us here at Case 19. You're here to talk about blockchain. There's been a lot of talk about it. It's been a buzzword for a long time, but where are we really at with it now, fundamentally? Yeah, I think it's it's hard for people to sort of envision where we are in the development. On the one hand, it's such a nascent technology, and it's um, we're seeing a lot of development on sort of even the protocol layers of blockchains and sort of different kinds of blockchains emerging. And at the same time, we're already 10 years in. So people sort of are looking for, well, what's the, you know, where are the use cases? Where are we seeing it in action? And so we're kind of in that limbo right now. Um, for us, a lot of the real interest and, and sort of um, hard work has been in looking at how enterprises are using blockchains and really st starting to fine tune their use cases um, in things like supply chain in particular, where you know, we can do track and trace in a new way um, from you know, an asset's origin all the way to an end consumer, or we can validate something through its life cycle. So we're seeing projects like that. We're seeing a lot of um, really inter-business use cases where it's partners that didn't have visibility into each other's work or sort of uh, supply chains, and now they're able to have a lot greater sort of flow of information alongside the flow of product. So there's some really interesting things brewing, but it's very much in the enterprise space as we start to um, sort of, you know, we're seeing the use cases develop, and then at the same time, the protocols are starting to kind of mature and get um, you know, more enterprise ready. So they're sort of going to meet in the middle there, and that's when we'll start to see more action sort of out in the public of what's going on. So in that sense, do you expect to see the proliferation of its use increase quite quickly, quite soon, if it's getting to that point? I mean, I think it's still a long journey. Um, as with any new technology, it just takes a long time to really find product market fit and be able to sort of see how it's best used. Uh, but it's, it's here to stay, and we're certainly um, excited in particular about seeing how uh, blockchain intersects with different technologies that are also coming about now, right? We have a growing Internet of Things. Um, so when you think about connected devices, having wallets, right, and having the ability to make purchases and have purchasing power, that's a whole new consumer class. That's 50 billion new consumers on the planet. Um, that we haven't really considered. And so I think we're gonna see this intersection and sort of synergy between an infrastructure, a decentralized computing tool like blockchain, and then the, the ability to build applications and uh, services on top of it that don't just meet sort of human trade um, needs, but actually kind of reconceive how machines can transact with each other and sort of open up a whole new era. In that sense, it is a true disruptor. Absolutely. I think, uh, you know, it's sometimes we look at how something's going to change for us and it, we forget that there's sort of whole new areas that might open up as well. Just with the internet, we didn't think, you know, that was going to change business or day-to-day -day business. But, in, you know, if we look for our, far enough out, it really did. You know, we had social media and all these things that came about that we never really conceived of as businesses. Um, I think the same is really true for sort of decentralized computing. We're going to have different kinds of services, different kinds of businesses built on top that are a little bit hard to imagine today. So if blockchain does bring about this sort of uh, decrease in the use of like institutions, what are they doing about it and how are they approaching it and are they pushing back against it or is it something that those institutions know is coming and they've got to kind of be ready for? I think they absolutely know it's coming. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of companies are doing really interesting work sort of reframing what their business model is, right? You're seeing components manufacturers uh, that used to build precision parts, right, for something like a, an, um, an airplane system, navigation system, or things like that. And they're saying, okay, well, now we have 3D printing, and we're able to do this at, you know, such a high degree with, you know, metals and all these different uh, materials that we didn't even think were possible 10 years ago. How do we reconceive this kind of traditional company that made a given part into a company that maybe just sells the, the file, you know, the design file, the CAD file for that kind of object? 
and then uses something like blockchain as a license management tool or as a way to sort of verify a file and make sure that it is in fact correct and you can buy subscription models. So there, you're seeing sort of companies that were traditional components manufacturers maybe turn into a SaaS company. And those kinds of transformations, I mean, that's just one example, but um, I think many, many different industries are looking at how does this technology not just um, sort of create some kind of add-on, but actually what do, what do they need to re-examine about sort of the fundamentals in how their business is run or um, what value they can add in the future. Are you quite excited about, about being at the cutting edge of something like this that could change the world? I mean, I think for me it's about learning. I love to see um, you know, how people are adapting their businesses or conceiving totally new businesses based on integrating this technology. It's obviously not a panacea. There will be many problems that come along with um, you know, using a new technology and sort of finding how it works best. But I do think it's, it's an exciting time, especially when you see the convergence with you know, sort of the growth of augmented intelligence and connected devices. And sort of we're seeing a lot of different technologies that I think of as sort of decentralizing technologies, right? They're, they're creating power into many, many places. Um, and they're happening all at the same time. So I think there's something very exciting about that and a lot to learn. When something is quite disruptive like that, there also need to be some checks and balances, I guess. And, and some people have said that, you know, there needs to be quite tight regulation around this too. What are your thoughts on that? I mean, regulation has absolute value. And, um, you know, in a, a lot of cases, what we really need to focus on for regulation is more about protecting consumers, right? And that's always true. You don't want people to enter into scams or to be defrauded in some way. Uh, the other side, though, is leaving enough room for open innovation and for sort of not boxing something in as a specific tool or category to be regulated one way when, in fact, it does something else. Um, so giving that room is, is really important. What we will see happen uh, progressively is more standards development, um, both in how the technology uh, works and uh, works well and then is audited and those kinds of things. So, And I guess blockchain will have to garner trust because what these institutions that exist now have is, I guess, is history and a level of trust, isn't it? Sure. I mean, there's a lot of you know value in in having a solid brand and being um, you know representing something to a consumer. So I don't really think that goes away. It's uh, it's more like we can use the back end differently and we can do things much more directly or transparently or one to one on the back end potentially too. And the next generation of users are much more savvy with all of those things anyway. They expect that transparency in every transaction they they have most of it through their mobile phone already. Sure, and I think, you know, when you think about sort of the next generation of, of users and consumers, a lot of it, they care a lot about these more one-to-one -one relationships. They want to be able to, you know, buy something from, uh, you know, a country they've never visited or be, you know, there's a much more, a much greater appreciation for some of the things that we sort of take for granted as globalization. And now um, being able to sort of reattach the stories and the value of uh, much more uh, direct kinds of transactions at really great distances is kind of cool. Bettina, thank you so much for sharing your yeah, insights. Yeah, appreciate it. It's fascinating to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you.